a bigger picture than, than the couple of places you guys are looking at for, for needing these, which is kind of why we felt we, we needed to get with the fire marshal and intervene. They have some other things that were in your flyer, which talk about removables and things, and, and the issues, of, we've had tons of issues with sand. Um, the sand blows, it fills down inside that, then the posts won't go down, they won't seat right, you can't get them to pull up right. They're just not going to function like they're designed to do. Um, so we feel this is a better function for something to be able to be laid down. It's not designed to be removed and open up the entire park, but it's designed to be able to be lowered to be able to allow safety vehicles on. It also talks about three different head configurations. Mm -hmm. How does this coordinate with the other columns that we, you know, are proposing? I, I don't think I, that's just a preference. I mean, it doesn't matter to us what you know whether it's got the square heads around it or or the like the solid one there without the little ring on it. There's kind of all three of them are up there. That's simply aesthetics. Um, you know. So the only bollards public works deals with are the transportation bollards, these. So when it comes to the other decorative bollards around, those are Parks and Rec. That's kind of the division we've made is this is what's got to do with transportation because we have an on-call group. So in the event we have an emergency scenario and a bollard is broken, they would be able to call somebody. Public Works is going to come out and change that bushing and get that bollard put back up. Parks and Rec doesn't necessarily have an emergency 24-hour response to be able to come out and, and put those, get those set back in place um, and, and whatnot. So that's why we kind of intervened and said the ones that are involving traffic, which are these breakaway designs, we would be maintaining and we would be the ones that would be replacing, standing up, changing the bushings out if they if they do get broke um, and in a breakaway scenario. Like I said, the best scenario would be Turn the bolt, drop it over, everybody drives over, does what they need, last person standing stands it back up and it's all good to go. Real world scenario, I don't want to project what our first responders and police and fire do in the, in the event of an emergency, they have no idea what that is, that they make the choice to break through them, that's still an option, and then we have an option of being able to go back and fix it afterwards. So that's the only point I'm trying to get to, and maybe you can help me. Yeah. The other dollars that we have
Oh, we will, we'll, we will supply it for, for whatever they need, and we'll, we'll point them to the direction, however it has to be to get the yeah, maybe the, the tape, the tape officers could have one in their truck. Oh yeah, I, I would think every officer should have one as they become throughout the city because we don't know what to predict. But you know, while we while the Urban Trails is looking at this pedestrian walkway, there could come an event where that Urban Trail becomes the main transportation system to get an emergency vehicle somewhere simply because of of a major pileup accident. You know, the people in the middle are the ones you might be trying to get an emergency access vehicle to, and that urban trail may ultimately end up being the best way to get there, as opposed to trying to clear all the cars out the way to get to the people in the middle. Yeah. So we'll make sure um, we've been working with Dennis, the fire marshal, and working with the police chief and the commander of the paint, and we're going to make sure whatever we go with, everybody is well equipped with the uh, proper material needed to make sure you go get all.
being replaced at, again, as needed on the lights that are on First and Second Street. Those are the tall mongoose lights. I don't know if I have a picture coming up. But again, Public Works is replacing the lights on the avenues as needed as they go street by street. Uh, obviously, we're going to look at the pier parking lot and other public parking lots as we get to each one of those projects, but they really are standalone, um, and they'll be part of that overall um, enhancement to the pier parking lot, for example. The lighting plan did not cover the boardwalk lights, and um, there, we, we need to kind of have another conversation internally on how to handle those. Uh, but they are currently all working as of now, and they are sea turtle friendly, the boardwalk lights, so they're not in the plan to replace at this time. And then obviously the lights in, in Latham Plaza uh, can be part of that plan when we get to that point for the Latham Plaza renovations. Okay, so here's what's out there now. We've got these. Oh, okay, I think like. So these are the ones that are on First and Second Street and on the avenues that Public Works is installing. And those are abundance? Yes. If I have the names correct, yes. <laughs> Uh, these are the ones that are on the street ends, and uh, Matt, correct me, some of them are, are singular and some are double. They have R2 side in on some of those? Uh, as of now, they're only going to be single. Okay. I'm more than so it looks bad. So these, these are, again, you know, to maintain compliance with the ordinance. Uh, these are what we call Granville or Acorn lights, kind of interchangeably, and these are primarily in Latham Plaza, but they do extend uh, up First Street and a couple different locations. They're on 2nd Avenue North, and I believe 6th Avenue North as well. And then these are the, the lights that are on the boardwalk. So these are, these are really our existing conditions right here. And really, this is the next slide is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. I just have you guys have a conversation about this, because as you know, Taylor and I are looking at all the selections that you guys have made with the trash cans and the bollards and the bike racks and seating. And we're, we're looking at the whole picture and saying, does all this stuff make sense as we put it together? Like Gary, you brought up our, our possible bollards going to be kind of in line aesthetically with the lighted ones that are more, um, you know, more geared towards lighting safety as opposed to traffic safety. So what we have out there now really is a more uh, historic aesthetic with the bollards and the acorn lights that are out there in Lincoln Plaza. And as Taylor and I are looking at the bollards and the trash cans that we're looking to purchase, you know, we're kind of like, oh, they don't really, they don't really go with the acorn lights. So we kind of wanted you guys to, to see that visually and maybe have that conversation with shifting gears a little bit. When we get to Lincoln Plaza, again, where the bulk of those lights are, we're going to be working really soon, hopefully with half. Um, to start having those conversations about Lincoln Plaza and kind of wanted to be able to give them a little direction one way or the other in regards to aesthetics and selections that you guys have already made and moving forward stylistically and, and kind of where we want to go with that. So again, Matt's here to answer any like technical questions on the lighting and Taylor and I have been trying to dissect this with him to, to figure out how we're going to move forward. So I'm uh, happy to answer any questions and would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. So I know the lighting plan has sort of gone underground and then above ground and underground again. And I'm not sure we've been party to all the different iterations of it. And one thing, you know, I pulled out something from at the very beginning. The boardwalk lighting was part of the plan. We were going to get LED lighting and under rail, and somehow that disappeared now? That, that's the first thing I want to. No, and I didn't include that in here. You guys are talking about the railing, the, yeah. the, the wall. Yeah, we didn't include that in here. That's separate. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's not in the lighting plan. It's in the hardscape plan. So we didn't exclude it intentionally, but I, I didn't no, think no it was in here. Plan. We were looking at those uh, overhead lights, the sea turtle. So it looked like the boardwalk as a separate project. Because it was part of our lighting plan, I don't know, six years ago, five years ago. Yeah. So, when you said that, my ears kind of like, Yeah, yeah. I meant the, what I was really more talking about were these, these overhead lights that are out there now, not yeah. so much the, the so wall, or the wall of lights. Apparently, the lighting plan you're working with is something we really, as a board, haven't seen yet. Because we've been asking for it, and it's been, you know, the beach is energy and it's working on it and stuff, but 
At least to me, this is all new. Well, that's not all new, I don't think. Well, I mean, it's, it's part of what we were presented to. It's like, it's like a piece of what we were talking right, about. Right, but there's, you know, the fact that boardwalk is excluded and um, this, that, and the other, I think, I mean, that's the stuff. Um, I think there's a couple things, if I may, I'm real quick, I need to add to you. So I inherited this. Same thing. Sorry. Well, yeah, so come have a seat with us. Like, so, um, we, I kind of inherited this from somebody, and um, there's a couple other things we need to mention. Those mongoose lights, they just uh, basically have to say we're not going to make those anymore. And, and so that's kind of good how all this project is coming together. We received a lighting plan from Dixon, uh, and they basically were proposing relocations and all that. And I started looking at it, I'm like, this is crazy. This doesn't make a lot of sense. It's, you know, and it doesn't really now match with what we have available. So we're going back to the drawing board, honestly, for, from my perspective. Beaches Energy, um, she's showing one of the lights. Like, we'd actually like to possibly maybe get some input in the direction we could go because those lights along first are not available anymore. So um, this Montague's light, they made this pole and this fixture to go together. And then they just stopped making the fixture. So now we have to find another fixture to go on top. But the thing is, you have to basically retrofit anything that we put on there. So basically, what we want to do is try to get a light that we like, and then we'll find a hole to kind of match and go along and work well. And uh, so kind of a blank slate, which is good for this. And, and the other thing is, we're, we're in the midst of really starting to evaluate LED conversion across the board. And uh, so the nice thing is there, the consistent light, we, we settle on 3,000 color for the temperature. And um, we have that opportunity, depending on the amount of money that this development is, just to go ahead and maybe replace them all, because now you're talking about mixed matching anyway. Um, because that picture, once you're saying, we're going light to light, we don't have a picture of them to point those out right now. We're scrambling to just come up with a suitable off so. And the, that, that wattage or want or whatever is compiled with this internal ordinance? So, anywhere, I have a report that came that was from Bill May a while ago. There was somebody a couple of years ago walked the beach and they took pictures of like 35 locations that were um, Granville, they were end zones. So we actually don't have a lot of end of life, as I actually started getting into it, but you see each other. But yes, the idea when I had that is I kind of went through and I really marked them on the maps. We don't have the light available for all of them, but yes, that is the intent is if there's anything that could have sea turtle nest that they can see from the beach, we'll just make it that amber, but big, so that you're throwing as much light as you can, but it's not going to affect the sea turtle. That was part of our plan from years ago, why we were moving the light lower onto the railing behind the dunes to be reflected on the ground. So that's like, so I know you guys, I know that's not what you guys focus on, but I do feel like that part of the plan should be considered, because we're going to do the big ambers, but then we also might in the future have those others. I think that that would play on each other, and it's just like, that's just my personal opinion. But if we're able just to like be open to one, I honestly don't care um, about what fixture per se, as long as it is consistent, it has the requirements needed for two tools, as well as the police officers for lighting and safety. And, I, and those are two big things for me. Yeah. Okay. So the Dick Skype plan is the last thing we've seen. We haven't seen anything but the Dick Skype plan, which, as you said, was old and basically didn't work according to what we guys determined it didn't work. So there's a plan out there, but we haven't seen it. You know, I don't know if you have anything like this. I don't really have the dick sign. That's all I'm So you don't have, have it? You don't have the diagram? So, so what they were going to do, they were going to like, digest it and then come back to us with that. Right, because there was three things that were important. One was the sea turtle. The other was pedestrian safety and lighting, where people felt comfortable because there was enough light. And we saw plenty of pictures looking up and down First Street and Second Street where you know, you're walking along, you can't even see the person across the street. And so we were you know, anxious that whatever was done in the lighting covered that and provides that you know, increased level of lighting in the pedestrian areas. Um, I don't know whether that's part of what you guys are working with. So, so honestly, back to Bill May, I never, uh, we basically, we don't have the resources in. We really kind of still have to work on that because we just don't. So at the time when Bill May was like, do you want us to do it or do you want Beaches to do it? Beaches at that time told them, you hate them. You just do it where you're at. So um, now that's kind of changed with all the material that she's around. Right. Uh, so the yeah, so it's really that. 
they're from the original language that there isn't another document. That's so all we have. Uh, yes, from this so side. So this is all from the side that we're Correct. working on those areas. And you guys have that. We are adjusting where the placements are, or are we trying to find the replacements to where the placements were not planned? So based on what I think we're going to have to standardize on the board, it kind of changes their whole. So we need to have a new plan, or are you guys proposing a new plan, or do you just need direction on it, or like what is the next step, like what is it you guys want from us? Because we've got the resources to help you out with you know, planning or materials or whatnot. So the next step for us, like I said, um, where I'm at, because if we're going to do this on a wholesale, for example, I'm just going to show you if you can't sign it. But um, this is basically like a, a series of family that we're kind of looking at. Um, it's that similar to the one that's up there from the sea turtle line. And it uh, comes down to either have one that's just discrete. Most people like that better than one concentrated source of light where it's kind of spread out. Um, you know, this is going to be in neighborhoods, it's going to be all that, not the coach stop. Those will be a little bit different. Um, but, like, so what I'm kind of looking for is direction. Because we need to get some of these lights in and evaluate, make sure they're going to do exactly what you say. Get them out there. What is the light? Um, these light patterns. This is all up for, we can specify how we want this to go. Is it urban? Is it residential? Is it street? You know, what type of light distribution we want. Um, that's, that's probably one of the important things. Yeah. That needs to be done as a uh, candle analysis uh, throughout the whole thing. And, and they did a couple of the lights, and that's where right. right. they did a, uh, I kind of did like a sort of a photometric right. facility, right. but right. now it's all changing. We're changing things, so it'd be good because you want at least, what, 2.5 foot candles to get reasonable coverage and comfortable lighting. Should we do a new study? Should we do a new study? Well, I think that that's important before we just start putting. Otherwise, you're going to have to be consistent. Because if yeah. one fails now and we specify new LED, you're going to have that bright white, which is the 4K, which is the model used, yeah. mixed with 3K. So, I mean, I think that might, and if we can work closer now, and then I'm kind of involved with this, I'd rather work closer. And again, this was a new audit, and we wanted to because it's different from an LED perspective where the uh, LEDs are basically on the edge. So you actually don't see the LEDs, which is another concept. And so we just kind of want to throw that out there. That's um, one of the newer ones, which again, I did see it up in um, Jordan Peach Chat, so I went up there to see it all. A more expensive, the mod use lights, and you need to the downtown. That's what we, we do not use those anywhere else. So they are kind of specific. So we have that opportunity since they no longer, they're obsolete. If we want to specify something that we can look into. Um, I don't know the cost of those. I have a meeting with them Friday of next week. Um, their engineer actually come down and start to help us to develop the standards we need to go on board. But um, that's kind of the, the family. So it goes with the one she showed you up there. Uh, you know, what's called the Luxe. So are you basically wanting to get an idea of how we want the aesthetic to be so you can then get the light study so then you can overlap it to the current plan or make adjustments to the current plan so then we can actually see what the new lighting system would do no. so then we can have the plan that Jeff is asking for. Yeah, we need to so, we need to we need to <laughs> so you guys need to know, do we want old school or do we want new school? Do we want to see through or not see through? We just need to give a direction of what we want as a overall aesthetic. Sure. Okay. Personally, I don't like what we have right now at all. Oh, all right. Yeah. Simple as that. And that, I would consider that modern, or there's just even this harder one, that that might be a little too spacey, but it's supposed to look like trees. And I like how we have space between the space our move the security baller and have a little indent neck. It's kind of a space between the feel. That's fine. Okay. LEDs are the way to go. They save on money. One more thing. The rep does have a, a demo kit. Unfortunately, it's in Tampa. I wanted to bring it. So if you guys want to see, he's actually got like three foot models of these lights where you can actually see what the light looks like and everything. And um, I can still you can tell me what time you're available and I can work with them to try to bring that demo. I'm not only one person at this whole group. I'm just looking at I'm fine with that as long as it is teacher friendly, gives the lighting to put its needs, is salt tolerant, and right. it is easily replaceable ish. <laughs> and then, so, we gotta maintain it. So yeah. of course we're gonna make we're not gonna put some of that stuff on. But they, they, they have to say their piece. So I'm concerned um, that you know what we started with, we're going to move this light, these number of lights here, and those number of lights there, and those actually are obsolete lights. And so why are we even bothering with that? Why don't we come up with a comprehensive plan of the new type of lights throughout the downtown area with the lighting study, 
um, in the proposed locations, incorporate incorporate boardwalk in it, because um, this sounds like a temporary fix. Well, no, no. step one is to select the line you want. Step two is to figure out the phone. So what was step this three thing with moving Granville's here and not That was the big site proposal based on what we had at the time. And okay. so, so we're not doing it. Absolutely. Of adding 
finding a complete new, I don't want to say division because that's not the proper word, but for lack of a better term, a whole new kind of subcategory here under an existing city department, and that's unfortunately nothing any of us in this room can make the decision to do. So hypothetically, we go through this process. You guys come up with a new plan to put in what not, we approve it. And then our boardwalk is still not completed. It is up to us to make sure somebody takes ownership of it and we fill in the gaps of what this plan won't do because they don't have access to the Correct. infrastructure that we're going to take. Or why not just do it in parallel? Um, because, you know, just because we couldn't get a bid once doesn't mean we have to give up on the project. So... You can take a certain section of it out and potentially look at it. Yeah. Um, so just, okay, we have to do it separate. Well, let's do it separate and let's not wait. And I think that's what Parks and Rec is planning on doing. The yeah. bike racks was just something that with their, with their piggyback vendor, they had somebody to be able to purchase the bike racks and move that yes. ahead. So that, that piece was carved out of that other project and said, look, we can move ahead with this. Same thing goes with the bollards. Like you say, you're talking about here with the, the different bollards. We've got bollards in other places that need exactly the same thing. So again, we're trying to get a standard so that Parks and Rec can own all of those non-transportation related bollards. And that's how Jason and I have worked together to say, if they're pretty bollards, they belong to the park. If they're traffic bollards, they belong to public works because we're going to be the ones that can respond to them. So we're trying to help get these definitive answers for that you're requesting. I, I understand your frustration, especially when it comes to the wall. I've seen the wall, and I've seen the pictures you're talking about. Yeah, it looks, and I understand to Matt's point, that's not the kind of residential lighting that they're responsible for in their department. They're, they're good at providing the meter that then feeds all that, but that's another separate realm of lighting that, that Beaches Energy, if you get, if they get involved in it, they're going to need more people to be able to do it and maintain it. Yeah, each different trucks, different equipment. Yeah. Different overkill. So again, I think that goes back to, we, we pushed that back with, with Jason and Parks and Rec as part of the hardscapes when they attack the next pieces, whether it's the benches or whether it's that wall, the lighting, or whether it's whatever, those next pieces of that hardscape plan that goes to Jason, I would think he should be able to exactly do what you're doing, pieces and parts and get that put together, whether that's a, a, another subsequent bid or a smaller bid for the each, each individual piece. The parking lot lights and all that fall into that category too, that we're never left, so uh, I kind of got tired of it because it's been bouncing back and forth and having to keep pointing fingers. So we kind of, we're kind of taking over our ownership and our standardized light that we can easily stock and maintain from like the Rick's parking lot and the pier parking lot. So it's it's something that's a little more squarish, but it still has that discreet um, little LED kind of spread on it. But it's similar thing. Is that, 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 that also it's just, it's, you know, I don't, I don't like complicated, like simple Does that include the parking lot um, on second and second of a parking lot? I believe any pretty much city parking lot, and we're kind of looking at something like that to sort of go over that, you know, and then we get out there and test our pilot So we have to uh, come up with a replacement. So that's the one we're going to try to request this sample that we put out there. Just got to make it put on the pole and all that. And then we kind of see what the lighting looks like. And then we sort of light it. And you know, we'll move forward and make the standard. Use that for the photometric studies as well. Too. And just before we get off of this, I do want to add one thing. Um, I don't think you were clear enough. We keep talking about the new plan, new plan, new plan. The plan itself, the reason it dictates is not necessarily the placement of the lights, it's the style of lights used, and the style of lights used in that plan, and then as the photometrics are drawn out around those lights, that's the obsolete part. We're not redoing the plan in essence of redoing the locations and where they're at, it's the actual lights and the, what's physically inside of the light. I mean, I'm not a lighting expert on the technical term, but the actual plan itself is not obsolete. The locations, where lights are, what we're replacing, that all remains relatively consistent with the exception of a few meetings ago, I think Dennis had said, look, if the light's on this side of the road and it calls for it to be moved and completely disrupts, we have to admit, we're not doing that. It's going to stay on the side it's on. With the exception of little things like that, the plan itself is, is the plan that we are working out of moving forward. The only thing that to change will be when Matt and Beaches Energy do the photometric study of whatever new lights are selected, which is why, you know, I don't want it to feel like we're trying to jump the gun, but that's why it's important to figure out if we're going to go forward with a more modern look, look something in the middle so that way Matt can get that in and compare that to the plan, the existing plan and those locations which remain the same and then be able to look at the new photometrics. And that's where we'll ask you out. You know, because we, we can do, we have an app on here. 
from you for like you know, King Lion, you do something, but I get that. But you're talking about the four five. We really don't have that much. Um, so if somebody does, then we can leverage to say, let me sit next to you, let's work on this together. And, and so, because again, that, that distribution pattern will be important as what we specify. So whether they think you okay. work best and they can make that, you know, that's what we want. We'll do that. So. From my perspective, um, you know, the modern trend is the way we've drawn to some of the features that we're talking about. I think we need to do the same thing with the lighting, particularly when I start to look at the architecture that's being put in place in, in the city as an example of um, the new town center project, um, Boku, um, Spring Hill Suites. The two restaurants are here. More modern buildings. So with that, needs to be a little bit more modern feel with the accessories
I don't rem I, I saw the original quotes, but I don't remember offhand what they were. I, I can look it up and I'll, I'll respond back. Uh, I'll either throw it in my next uh, uh, monthly update or I'll, I'll send an email to Taylor. She can share it. I'll look back. But I, I was thinking it was one of them was a 24 or 26 week lead time type of scenario. I mean, that's just the way we're seeing everything. I something the other day was a 72 week lead time. Unless you want to pay three times as much, and then you could have it full. But you know, 72 week lead time is a year and a half to wait. It's, it's become a dangerous little crossing down there because I cross, and when you're in the pedestrian crossing, the vehicles don't stop. They do both of them. I've seen people cross without the lights. I see people cross with the lights. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is in the process, Gary. I'll, I'll try to find an update or I'll have them reach out and try to get something on it to find out an idea. Restaurant. Corrales is a four COP special restaurant, for example. 
So what this bill would allow, if it is approved by the state, is an exemption from those rules, like Taylor said, so that a smaller restaurant could serve more than just beer and wine. And that's really the whole goal. You know, we, we hope we're going to have some new construction downtown soon. It might have smaller tenant spaces. Council really wants to encourage those smaller restaurants that want to serve beer, uh, beer, wine, and liquor that otherwise wouldn't be able to, to have that opportunity just in the downtown. So it wouldn't be an exemption. This is not for bars. This is for uh, restaurants as is defined under the state statute. So all this is really doing is just changing the minimum size. Minimum size in the city for full restaurants, correct, in the downtown. I could see a real benefit of doing that in that we might look at from the uh, Atlanta Beach, Neptune Beach, downtown center. There's a wonderful restaurant down there called Doros. It's a small, little seated, I don't know, I don't think it's more than 50. It's not. It's not. Yeah. <laughs>
be all. If this starts, if this gets approved by the state, and then Jack's Beach decides, oh, we, maybe we do want to include Fourth Avenue South or Dolphin Depot or go out this way or that way, um, that is certainly an option down the road if, if council chooses to go that direction. Are these sort of rubber stamp passed by the legislature when they're proposed, or is there a lot of community on it? The first one, however, there was a lot of money that was about them. That was years and years and years ago, and now they go through them easily. Um, as it says on the memo, you know, at this time, there really isn't any formal action because we are in a workshop. Um, obviously, if the consensus of the CRA is that, yes, we would like to formally support this endeavor with council, um, we will draft a resolution. Uh, in your packet, there was also the council resolution that they approved, so it would read very similarly to this, um, and then we would bring that to our regular meeting this month. So just so I can say on record, I understand and get that this would be a very good bonus and attractor for the residents. I also would say on record, we should expect when it becomes public knowledge to all get phone calls and complain about it, about the disclosure of having more alcohol in an area that most people would like to get
commercial business, commercial buildings, or business owners in that area. So the apartments over there back on the back side of Rips, for most of the parts of property, if they decide they want to paint that building, are they eligible to apply for a facade grant?